So, Kira, tell us a little bit um, about yourself. So before we started the podcast, um, you were talking officially. Mm -hmm. You were talking about how you were from Missouri. Oh, I actually grew up in Nashville, Tennessee, but I lived in St. Louis, Missouri for three years before I moved to California. Okay. And I absolutely hated Missouri. Yeah? (laughs) Is it? It's freezing, right? It's freezing in the winter. It's absolutely freezing. And the best part about St. Louis, uh, whenever I lived there, were the strip clubs. Mm. Um, You're allowed to touch the dancers with their permission there. Mm -hmm. So dancing was a lot easier for me. So you were dancing Mm -hmm. there back then? Uh Yeah. Uh, I was a stripper at the Larry Flint's Hustler Club in East St. Louis. And I absolutely loved it. Like, if I have a strip feed, dancing I want that club to be the first place that I go to because I will always consider them my home club um, and they had really cool champagne shower shows and live shows which I was yeah. kind of my first times doing girl girl stuff yeah and you enjoyed that <laughs> yeah because you know a lot of girls I honestly like a lot of girls who've come on the show started off as a dancer mm-hmm. um, but a lot of them hated it um, but you, but you really liked it. So what did you like about it? I loved pole dancing. Okay. Hustling for dances was the part that I hated. Yeah. I think um, that's mm-hmm. uh, to, to semi correct myself. That was definitely something that like, there's actually, there was someone, there was one person who was on recently who said she liked doing that. She liked hustling. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who it was. That's really bad. Anyways. My, I feel like there are a lot of different areas where the hustle's different. Mm-hmm. In the Midwest, it's mostly trying to sell lap dances and champagne rooms. Right. Um, there are other places where you're trying to get as many tips as possible on stage. Right. So in St. Louis, I worked at a really slow club in the beginning because mm-hmm. I didn't know how to move. My hair was really short and frizzy dreads stuck out everywhere. Yeah. So uh, the only club I could get that would let me work there, uh, they only put me on day shift. So there are a lot of times mm, where I was just that's bored. That's like when no one was, no one's yeah. there. We, we would have construction workers who would come in for the lunch special and that was pretty much it uh, so I started teaching myself pole tricks just to pass the time mm-hmm. and I started getting good and yeah. once I started feeling more confident I went ahead and tried out at the more big club in the area which mm-hmm. was uh, Larry Flint's yeah, and I absolutely loved that place it yeah. was so much fun so I started working night shift there and I Really liked putting more focus on getting stage money, but the bulk of my money did come from champagne rooms. So that's the part that sucks as a stripper. If it's a slow night or there's a lot of people in there, but they're only just tipping, Mm -hmm. and then you're not really going to make that much. Yeah. So you said that they allow touching with the dancer's permission, mm-hmm. and that sounds like something that you that you liked. That, yeah. Yeah. I did because it. I, in my opinion, um, I got treated with most respect at a club that was full nude, full bar where touching was allowed. Because That's whenever so it's, I've tried working at the clubs over here uh-huh. where there's no alcohol and you're not allowed to touch, and then people are trying to get away with stuff more often. So I, I liked when. Guys knew they could touch if they asked, Mm -hmm. so they just asked me, and I could take their hands and run it down my body, and that was fine. Whenever I was working at a club where they're trying to get away with stuff, then that's what I would get, like, them randomly trying to finger me and things like that, so... Mm-hmm. It's like an interesting um, insight into, like, the male psyche. Like, yeah. if you, it's like that situation, like, if you, like, allow a guy to do something, like, say if you have, like, an open relationship, which mm-hmm. I know you do, yeah. it's like... I don't. I don't want to say they're less likely to stray because that doesn't make sense. Because being an open relationship means they can do that. But then if you're like, I guess maybe it's more like, you know, if you're a super jealous girl and mm-hmm. you like can't stand it when a guy like talks to other girls or whatever, then they're more likely to like cheat on you. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they're trying to go do it behind your back. Yeah. Um, if you're already okay with them doing it, then it's like, oh, I can do that thing that I want. Cool. And they don't try to push for things more as often. Right. Um, and at the clubs over here, I remember the, the first time I tried to work in an L.A. club, I was just talking to a guy and I put my hand on his thigh, nowhere near his crotch, just uh-huh. just talking to him and like, like mostly put my hand near his knee. Mm-hmm. And and I got in trouble. The manager came over and told me that if I did that again, that he would have to make me leave. And I was just like, really? Like wow. I was touching him in a yeah. non-sexual place and I yeah. was comfortable with it. Why is that not okay? Yeah. Uh, so I, I just gave up on trying to dance out here. Yeah. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.